Hey Wolfpack and welcome back. I hope all is going well. Today, we're reading My Son Went Missing Last Summer. The Kid the Police Gave Me Is Not My Son by Off Brand Barbie. But before we start, if you had to date a movie killer, who would it be and why? Comment down below. With that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. My son Kaiser was taken away from me in May. He walks home from school usually. One day, I had a job interview, so I made the mistake of letting my seven-year-old walk himself home. I know, it was irresponsible, and I'll never forgive myself. I figured since he was walking with the older boys who live on our street, he'd be okay. They claimed he never exited the school. I was always suspicious they had done something to him. For months and months, I waited in hope to get my baby Kai back. And two weeks ago, I got a phone call from the police. It was him. They found him walking down the side of the road in the middle of the night. They took him to a hospital and I could go pick him up. I went to the hospital and saw him laying in bed. My boy. His blonde hair disheveled and his green eyes encompassed by dark bags. He was pale and very thin. He didn't even look at me. He just stared straight at the wall. I almost couldn't recognize him. Is... is he okay? I asked the doctor standing next to his bed as I clutched his hand. It was so cold to the touch, his nails long and sharp. Physically, yes, a little malnourished, but other than that, he's okay. He refuses to speak to us, though. We believe it's due to the trauma and we hope through therapy he will begin to speak again. The doctor told me as she handed me medicine to give him for anxiety. She also gave me a reference to a therapist. Do you want to go home, Kai? She asks as she bends over to be eye level with him. He slowly turned his head and blankly stares at her, almost like he's looking through her. Yes, he said with a raspy and quiet voice. I assumed it was from not speaking for so long. The doctor looked at me with a grin. This was progress, right? We got his things and I got him in the car. The ride home was silent most of the way. What do you say to a child that you let get taken? Kai, baby, I'm so sorry this happened. I said as I drove. I glanced into the rearview mirror to see him and I almost swerved off the road. His eyes were black. With yellow irises, his skin was almost purple, like he's been strangled and he had misaligned a mess of sharp teeth, smiling back at me, his head moving all around in sharp, twitchy motions. I turned and looked at him, and none of that was there, just my poor, sickly-looking boy. What's wrong, mummy? He asks flatly. I catch my breath. Oh, um, nothing, sweetie, I say and I get us home. Maybe I could use a little therapy after this ordeal as well. We got inside my little two-bedroom house. Are you hungry, baby? I asked him. He shook his head no. I begrudgingly let it go. I wanted him to eat, but I knew it would be bad to force him. I do, however, hand him a pediasure. I'd keep fresh ones in stock for the day I got to have my baby back. I take the lid off and hand him the drink. You drink that up and I'll run you a bath, okay? I ask. He doesn't say anything in return, just stares at me. He doesn't even take a sip. The silence is a bit eerie. I walk into the bathroom and run him a bath, just the right temperature. When I come back out to him, he drank all of his drink. Good job, bud, I say as I pick up the empty container. I walk him to the bathroom and he looks at the tub, then looks at me, as if he doesn't know what to do. Um, I'm gonna leave the door open. Call me if you need anything. I tell him. No, he says quickly. I'm a big boy now. Close the door, he demands. I hesitantly oblige. It has been almost a year. He probably will want privacy now. While he's in the tub, I begin cleaning. 
I wipe down the counters, and when I go to throw away the paper towels, I see in the trash can that he dumped his drink out. I sigh in defeat. He needs nutrition, and he's refusing to have anything. He walks out of the bathroom, still wet from the bath. All clean, honey? I ask him. He nods, with the same blank expression he's had all day. Okay, then I think it's bedtime. I say, as I walk him to his room. Everything is as it was when he left. Only I kept washing the sheets every week, despite him not being here to sleep in his bed. I never knew when I'd get him back, but I wanted fresh sheets waiting for him. I put him in his race car bed. He didn't lay down, he just sat there and stared at the wall. Well, if you want to read for a bit you can, but not too late, I say, as I hand him green eggs and ham by Dr. Seuss. I kiss him on the head and tell him I love him. I love you too, mommy, he says, flatly, still not looking at me. After I leave his room, I go to the bathroom. He always left the floor soaked, so I was sure I needed to clean that up. When I walked in there, I was taken aback by the smell. It smelled like rotting meat. There was a thick, gray ring of grime around the tub. Was he really that filthy? I quickly clean it up and go to bed. I wake up in the middle of the night, extremely thirsty. So, I threw my robe on and went into the kitchen. It's dark, only illuminated by the glow of the TV still on in the living room. There, I see Kai eating a chicken drumstick. Must be leftovers from the other night. I'm glad he's eating, but I don't know why he didn't want something fresh. He stops eating and stares at me. He looks extremely angry, like I interrupted him. Kai, baby, I can make you something if you're hungry, I say. As I get closer, I notice something. How pink that chicken was. It was raw. I snatched it away from him. Kaiser, what are you doing? You're going to get sick. I scold him as I throw away the slimy meat. I take him back to his bed. Again, he just sits up, staring at the wall. I'm sorry, mommy. I'm just so hungry. He said in the same flat tone. It's okay, honey. You just can't eat raw meat. I tell him. I begin to walk away, and he says something I can't believe came out of a child's mouth. Why not? You got plenty of raw meat. Well, I was dead for all you knew. I froze and turned around. My son was smiling at me, like he knew he said something awful. But how could a child knew what that meant? Who taught you to speak like that? I demanded from the doorframe. He just began laughing. The kind of laugh children give if they see someone slip and fall. I angrily left the room. I don't want to punish him on his first day home. Fast forward and I wake up this morning and my son is standing over me with a pair of scissors. I jump back in fear. I want a haircut, mommy. He tells me. I notice his hair is quite long. I agree and take him to the kitchen so I can give him the same cut I've given him since he was two years old. As I set him down, I notice paper on the floor. I pick it up and flip it over. My face. I pick up another one. My face as well. I find about ten of these little pictures of my face and I realized what happened. He cut my face out of our family portraits. I begin to cry. He even cut me out of the pictures with his late father. All of them ruined. Kai, why did you do this? You know these were very special to mommy. They're the only memories I have with Daddy. I tell him through sniffles. Don't be sad, Mommy. You'll see him soon. He tells me. I turn to him. What is that supposed to mean? I ask him. I couldn't believe he knew what he was saying, but I needed an explanation. I met him when I was gone. He said with a smirk. What? I ask in disbelief. He must just be acting outright. I met Daddy. He said the accident was your fault. You were being a bitch at his birthday party and drove home. It's your fault. And you'll be punished soon. He promised me. He said in a matter-of-fact tone. Kaiser, go to your room. I tell him. He nonchalantly gets off the chair and walks to his room like nothing happened. I began sobbing. Who told him about the accident? 
I didn't want to tell him about that until he was older. His father drank and drove one time and it cost him his life. I didn't want it to taint his idea of his dad. After about an hour, I go to his room to apologize. When I open the door, I screamed. That same boy I saw in the rearview mirror with the yellow eyes and purple skin was there, wearing my son's clothes. Shut the frickin' door, Carol Ann! A deep voice coming out of the child-shaped creature screamed. That's when I fainted. I woke up and the boy was standing over me, looking at me once again like my son. You fell, Mommy? He said. Um, yeah, Mommy doesn't feel good. I'm gonna go take a shower. I said. I ran to the bathroom and turned the shower on and locked the door. I had been in here for half an hour typing this out. He periodically will pound in on the door, frantically, with a strength a child doesn't possess. I don't know what that thing is, but it isn't my son. I'll update soon, but I'm very scared right now. Thanks for listening, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your own story, the links for my email and subreddit will be down below. I've also created a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that said, have beautiful nightmares, and I will see you next time.